world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Uh, this is an outrage, isn't it? I mean, when are they going to learn these ridiculously kind of woke liberal um, parole board types that these kind of individuals are not rehabilitatable? Uh, we need some serious parole board reform. The parole board still takes the basic attitude that we have no right, we the public, have no right uh, to uh, transparently see what their reasoning is. They make a decision and it is uh, handed down from on high. Uh, now, in the case of uh, this woman uh, who killed, uh, he, he, she didn't technically kill her baby, uh, she was uh, held responsible for his death. He died with 50 serious injuries uh, in the charge of this woman, Tracy, and her partner. And uh, she got an indeterminate prison sentence. Now, she's done 13 years. The parole board has decided she's going to come out. Now, there's two things about this. I think her crime is absolutely unconscionable. It really so is. So it's not just about. The only thing the parole board decides is whether or not this person, this mother, is safe to put back into the community. I say uh, she sat by uh, while her poor little baby died, 17 months old, with 50 serious injuries, and she deserves a longer sentence. It's not just about rehabilitation and putting her back into the community. It's about punishment. Yeah. And the British public should have a say in this. And if you went round Britain right now and said, does this woman deserve to be let out after serving just 13 years behind bars, uh, I'll tell you what the answer will be. 100% no. No, of so course leave not. Leave her in jail. I mean, this is the same woman, by the way, um, who stood by while her 17-month-old um, son, he was when he died, uh, so from, the, from a very, very young age, um, watched her partner beat him, uh, th watched her partner throw him around the room. She took part in some of the abuse as well. I mean, she's also been refused parole in the past. She's also been let out once and then had to be recalled because of what she was doing. If she is released... She'll be given a new identity. Presumably she'll be given housing. She'll be given public money to live on. I mean, it's absolutely unconscionable. It certainly is. And as I was saying, uh, you know, I'm all for rehabilitation. I'm all for deciding whether or not prisoners, uh, having served their sentence, are safe to be let out, released into the community again. Fine. But let's not forget what prison is really for. Yeah. It's for punishment. And this woman sat by while her poor little baby son was bat systematically battered to death. Yeah. She watched it. She took part in it. And I don't think 13 years is long enough to serve a sentence for something like that. She should stay in jail and the parole board needs massive reform. Dominic Raab. Uh, the Justice Secretary is quite right to challenge their ridiculous decision and uh, he is quite right to say that the parole board system needs radical root and branch yeah. reform. Yeah, this because... is not in... Uh, uh, this is in, in... Oh, we're just li literally freezing there for a moment. These are basically the same people, by the way, and I think I heard Alberto Costa, uh, who's an MP with the Justice Ministry. Um, Alberto Costa, I think I heard him on your show last night, Kevin. Yes. Um, these are the same people who let Colin Pitchfork out, who thought it was a good idea to release John Warboy as the black cab rapist, you know, both of whom uh, have been proven to have been a mis massive mistake. Warboy's never did get out. Pitchfork did, but has now been recalled because he started hanging around schools and looking at children. I mean, unbelievable that these people think that they, can, they can't they can be fooled. She's clearly fooled them. She's been on some course, apparently, and she's turned into a completely different person. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I don't really care. I don't think 13 years is long enough a sentence to serve for that. As I say, prison is all about re rehabilitation, uh, getting people ready to get back into the community. Fine. But let's not forget what it's really for. Its primary purpose is to punish people who have committed crimes. And this woman committed the most appalling crime imaginable. 13 years for that. No thanks. Yeah. Longer.
Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think everyone listening to this will be appalled at this notion uh, that, that, you know, that rehabilitation can occur with somebody who commits such heinous crimes. It should never be allowed. Let's talk about another story that's piqued my interest this one. The BBC, apparently, uh, that uh, bastion of middle class champagne socialism. Apparently, they're going to um, get staff from low class areas and low class backgrounds to sort of to balance up the numbers of people working for them who are middle class. I mean, how ludicrously pompous and snobby is it to even say that? I mean, could you imagine anything more patronising than know. that? A bunch of middle class or mo mostly upper middle class people who've been to private schools, Oxford and Cambridge, deciding, oh, we should get some of those lovely working class people <laughs> into work for us as well. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> it's pathetic. I'll tell you what you do if you're running any company. You hire people and you promote them on the grounds of their talent, right. of their ability of to do the job. And it shouldn't matter a damn whether, you're, uh, whether you went to Eton or the local comprehensive. It's as simple as that. The BBC will never get that through their heads. They will continue uh, to prioritise... Uh, public school educated Oxbridge graduates uh, and uh, they'll let a few token people in from the local comprehensive and all that is is a publicity blitz to try to persuade them that at long last the public broadcaster, the state broadcaster uh, is uh, getting a, a sense of egalitarianism it will never have that the BBC, it's like the NHS the public are waking up to these public bodies. Uh, they are. We've been conned for many years. The BBC isn't worth our money, and frankly, right now, nor is the NHS. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I would be in favour of would be them uh, going back, perhaps, to looking at what the working class uh, salary should be, because Laura Kunzberg uh, has just got a seventy-five thousand pound pay rise to three hundred and forty thousand pounds a year for doing a one-hour show once a week. Right. So yeah. maybe they should pay her the minimum wage. And then maybe uh, that would be fairer. But apparently what they're going to do is, uh, being the BBC, of course, they've set a target. Five years from now is when they're hoping to achieve 25% oiks, 75% snobs. Yeah. Can, can, what, what, can we just stop this farce? <laughs> let, let the BBC do whatever the hell they want, but not with our money. Let's stop giving them our money. In the olden days, uh, what used to happen is the robber barons... Uh, the aristocratic class used to take all the money from the peasants, tax them up to the hilt, and then divide it between themselves, share out the, the money between the rich people. Now what happens is all the serfs and the peasants, you, Mike, me, the public, yeah. we have to give our money to the BBC, and then the new robber barons, the BBC staff, the BBC elite, divide it between themselves. 370 grand to present some programme no one watches on a Sunday morning. I know. Forget about it. We are being conned. It's outrageous. It really is. I've no idea why they think this is going to change anything inside the BBC either, because we've always said, you know, they talk about diversity of the BBC. It's not diverse at all, because it's not run on the basis of what colour your skin is. It's run on the basis of what class you come from, because the one place you don't see working class kids getting jobs is the BBC. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and now uh, they're going to try to cure this problem in the age-old way that doesn't work, quotas. So then, you know, I've got nothing against uh, people who went to Eton and Oxford and Cambridge and all that. Of I course, feel sorry for them. I, I, I treat everybody the, the same. They should have as much chance of getting a job at the BBC as working class people. One fine day, the people who employ people at the BBC will realise that you should just hire the people who are the most capable and the most talented, as opposed to what school yeah. they went to uh, and what university they went to. And all they're going to do with this quota system is turn the system on its head and say, oh, we can't hire that guy because he went to Eton. Yeah. We'll have to hire that guy because he went to the rubbish local comprehensive. Yeah. That won't cure the problem. It's pathetic. I know. Do you know how they're going to measure whether you're working class or not? Uh, presuming from your accent. No, they, no, they're going to ask you what your parents' occupation was when they were 14, when you're 14. What were your parents doing? That's how they're going to judge whether you're working class or not. I mean, how uh, pathetic. It's just disgusting. It's disgusting. It's classist. Yes. We've maybe the next question, maybe the next question could be, do you have parents? Are they yeah. married? Were they married? <laughs> Did you know your father? Or, yeah. uh, well, you know, was your mother in prison? 
you know. Do you have both parents? Do you yeah. have both parents living with you? In it's what pathetic. tax? It's in pathetic. which tax? In which tax bracket were they? I mean, it's awful. Uh-huh. Absolutely yeah. awful. Kevin, listen, see you tonight, 7 o'clock. Uh, another great show coming up, Kevin O'Sullivan. Great uh, tweet here from Emma, uh, who says this, Baby P's mother is of childbearing age still. What's to stop her having another baby? That's what I worry about. Hopefully measures have been implemented to make sure she cannot be allowed to keep another child if she does happen to become pregnant. Very good point. You know, this is a woman with history, history of beating children, right? You're going to let her out so she can have another child? Do me a favour. The world has indeed gone completely stark, staring, bonkers mad. Good talk. Hot talk. talk. Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.